today. Okay, so we're looking at the paper Why Abortion is Immoral by Don Marcus. So Marcus attempts to argue that abortion is wrong because he says that abortion denies a fetus a future of value. So what Marcus is doing is he avoids talk of persons, he avoids thinking about whether the fetus is a person or not by trying to come up with a novel account of morality, um, a novel theory of what makes murder wrong, and then apply that to abortion. So he says murder is wrong because it denies the person being murdered a future of value in the same way abortion denies a fetus of future value. So we have the same level of wrongness. So we'll take a look at what he says and see what we can make of his argument. All right, he says, um, given the sort of controversy around abortion, he says, all this suggests a necessary condition of resolving the abortion controversy is a more theoretical account of the wrongness of killing. After all, if we merely believe but do not understand why killing adult human beings, such as ourselves, is wrong, how could we conceivably show that abortion is either immoral or permissible? So, again, the controversial premise is whether a fetus is a person or not, and uh, Marcus is attempting to discuss abortion without claiming the fetus is or is not a person. And that would be a useful thing if you could do it, but um, something I'd be aware of is that if someone's trying to do something completely different than everyone else, um, they're either a genius or they don't know what they're doing. So I think Marcus is probably in the second category, but we'll see. All right, so he says we start from what we know. It's wrong to kill us. So he lists three possibilities um, in conceptual space. He says, well, is murder wrong because of what it does to the killer? And he talks about how it brutalizes the killer but that's silly, that's not why it's wrong. Um, is it wrong because of what it does to other people? Well, you know, maybe, but that's not really why it's wrong. It's wrong because of what it does to me, he says. If someone were to murder me, it would be wrong because of what it does to me. Okay, well, that's an interesting point because, you know, if someone comes along and kills me, um, what does it really do to me? I'm gone. It sort of doesn't hurt me, in a sense. They do it painlessly. So he says, the loss of one's life is the greatest loss one can suffer. The loss of one's life deprives one of all the experiences, activities, projects, and enjoyments that would otherwise have constituted one's future. Therefore, killing is wrong, primarily because the killing inflicts one of the greatest possible losses on the victim. When I am killed, I am deprived both of what I now value, which would have been part of my future personal life, but also what I would come to value. Therefore, when I die, I am deprived of all the value in my future. Inflicting this loss on me is ultimately what makes killing me wrong. This being the case, it would seem that what makes killing any adult human being prima facie seriously wrong is the loss of his or her future. So he offers what he calls two considerations in support of his view. We consider killing the worst crime, the worst thing you could do to someone. And... Uh, people that are dying of terminal illness believe the loss of their future is a bad thing. And he offers some other um, things he thinks uh, support his view. Uh, you can see them in the notes. So let's look at his basic argument. It is morally wrong to deny anyone a future of value. In most cases, abortion denies the fetus a future of value. So in most cases, abortion is wrong. Now, there's sort of a hitch here we should see in the argument or a problem right away is that in most cases, abortion denies a fetus of the future value. So what if it turns out that the fetus um, is going to have a miserable life? Maybe even do no fault of their own. Maybe they're going to be abducted and tortured at some point in their life. Um, or maybe they're going to, you know, get cancer when they're two or something like that. Or maybe they have some a severe physical disability that's going to cause them a great deal of suffering. So... His argument seems to tell us that, um, it doesn't say that we should necessarily um, kill such a fetus, but it doesn't seem to work in the same way, and that seems to be a problem. Certainly most um, people who think abortion is wrong think it's still wrong, even if the person's going to turn out to not have a good life or something. You know. But um, there's other questions that arise about the account. So there's the loss of the mother's future, or... Um, Certainly when you have a child, you lose some aspects of your future. So if we're just thinking about it in terms of futures of value, how do we compare the two? 
How do we decide at what point a future is valuable enough? Um, do we have permission to terminate, terminate an unvaluable life or maybe even obligations? There's a lot of questions. And you can notice that those are the types of questions utilitarian would have to answer um, because his account is very utilitarian, although he never sort of comes out and says that. But the real sort of problem comes, which he addresses, there's a, a very obvious objection to this argument, which is that it seems that something else, which is fairly standard, um, is problematic on his account. So his account is that denying anyone a future of value is morally wrong, but it looks then like contraception denies uh, someone a future of value. And therefore, it looks like contraception is immoral. Now, if you were a Christian, you might uh, some think that uh, contraception, yes, contraception is wrong. But it's not just contraception that's wrong, um, if his account is true. It's abstinence as well. So then it turns out that we have a sort of obligation to produce as many uh, children as possible if his account of abortion is correct. And that seems sort of obviously wrong. Um, now he tries to avoid this conclusion. He says that um, only actual combinations of sperms and eggs, not merely possible combinations, have futures of value. Um, but I think in doing that, what he's doing is he ends up, I say here, is retreating to a conceptions of rights. Because what he's saying is actual beings have a right to exist. Possible beings don't have a right to exist. Um, but actual beings do have a right to exist. Um, and that seems to be only, if you just do it in terms of future of value, you have trouble sort of pushing back these other objections. Um, so here could be his argument um, written out. If contraception is wrong, then it takes away um, anyone's future of value. Only actual beings have futures of value, so contraception does not take away anyone's future of value. So contraception is not wrong, um, but it's far from clear that only actual beings have futures of value. Um, so the argument uh, is problematic. I mean, some people think that uh, we're sort of doing a grave moral injustice to future residents of the earth. We're violating their rights. So, and there's certainly a plausible way of thinking about that in terms of uh, destroying the environment and things like that, uh, climate change. So. Um, this premise is far from obvious, I guess one might say. All right, so that's basically Thompson's argument. He tries to sidestep the impasse in the abortion discussion by finding a way around the disagreement regarding the person of the fetus, but he relies on the fact that fetuses have future value um, and that it's wrong to deprive them of future value. Um, looks promising on the surface, but it ends up relying on this sort of dubious claim that um, only actual beings have futures of value, which it's far from obvious why that should be the case. And that is Don Marcus's defense of abortion.